doing that. I just forgot that we we're actually not. Yeah, we <laughs> did. <laughs> okay, but yeah. So no, now what I'm saying might not actually sound so crazy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, the um, the the monsters, or as they're called in the game, they're called mirages, um, or something like kind of a like chibi style. And the main characters, Lan and Rain, as you see in battle, they're in their giant form, which is I guess yeah. your more oh, normal human looking form, <laughs> I suppose. Um, but you can change them into what's known as their Lilikan form. And Lilikan is basically the in-game uh, term for like their chibi form. But you know, as most people on the stream probably uh, will recognize, you know, chibi style. Mm. We'll, we'll call them chibi uh, for for the their little pocket thing. forms. Yep. So yep. what I'm going to show you now is much you can actually change them while you're walking around. So you can actually change your height from giant to Lilikan uh, as you go. It's and, just uh, adorable. It's adorable. It's it adorable. What's cool is but when. But what is the purpose, though, of changing them from their oh photorealistic forms to their TV forms? Riding chocobos, clearly. <laughs> clearly, to stand on the head <laughs> of a chocobo and ride it around. Like, it's, uh, you know, but it's, you know, we saw there you had the classic battle system as well. We, we saw Final Fantasy XV yesterday, which has got this new dynamic battle system. We're here, you're going back to the classic turn based uh, ATV you know, mechanics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, the thing is with World of Final Fantasy, yeah, it, it goes back to the more traditional turn-based ATV style, but it has something brand new to the franchise as well, which is, which basically is the core uh, mechanic of the battle system is uh, its stacking system. So the reason why you can change uh, your character size from uh, uh, chibi to, I guess, normal is uh, to adjust your size. And there are three different types: There's large, medium, and small, and you can stack. Um, mirages on top of other mirages and on top of you uh, to create more powerful stacks to use in battle. So Ian has gone into this battle in his chibi form and you can see that he has two characters um, stacked on, well one character stacked on rain and one mm. character stacked on, on land. And when they're stacked, uh, basically the, um, your allies combine their strength. So you have one um, character on the ATV bar, which you can see on the left, which fills up. And then you have what well, combined well, HP well, and MP well, gauge, well, well. but you can also split them. So into uh, if you have a stack of three, then you can have three individual uh, characters to use in battle. But obviously, because they're not stacked, they're a little bit weaker. But then you get three attacks. Mm. But why would yeah? I, I, well, you've kind of just answered my question because I was going to say if if I can stack uh, three characters who all have fire and create fire go, why would I play unstacked? Ah uh, yeah, basically yeah is um. There's, there's a couple of reasons, but the main reason is that, yeah, you can basically triple the number of attacks you could do per turn. But then there's the risk reward because they're weaker apart. So, you know, if they get hit with a really powerful or critical hit, then they're going to be a lot more danger than if they got hit when they were stacked. Because, yeah, your stats also combine. And with the stacking, depending on which Mirage you have, which you can uh, imprison through, um, through the game, which we'll talk about in just a bit, you have a huge variety of um, mirages that you can stack together. So if you want to go with like really super tough, strong, high defense, physical attack mirages, you can get like a brute force kind of um, team. Or you know, if you want like a very magic focused, then you can do that. Or if you design your your stacks to be played apart, you can also do that. It all depends on your strategy. And now what Ian is doing is he is in trying to imprison these bombs. And imprisoning is the system where you. Oh, this oh. could be painful. Oh no. Oh, oh, so, oh. It's okay, it's okay. oh, we're good. We're good. It's we're good. <laughs> it's oh, oh. <laughs> so close. I was I was just about to make a joke about um being in or well, being in, either being in hot water or you know being too the kitchen being too hot. Oh, they or the, any the, kind the of wasted ponds. It was it's about too late. Oh, I was too late when he got when <laughs> So <laughs> now <laughs> now that we've been defeated, we've actually been unstacked by the uh, enemy. So you see uh, our little choco chick whose name is Twitch. Because uh, oh. you can name them when you capture them as well. You caught him actually before we started we, the no, show today. It was just a pure coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> you can't prove so, anything. <laughs> so now what you can do is if you're using items, you could use two potions instead of just one because there's now two of us because we're unstacked. Yeah. And you know you could use it in that way as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stack them back together. Now earlier we saw you attempting to imprison the bomb. Um, what is imprisoning? So imprisoning is the system where you basically recruit uh, these mirages into your party, so then you can use them in yeah in your team. So you can put them in your stacks, or you know, or, ha ah, or however however you want to use them in your uh, team, depending on your playstyle. So it's like a monster hunting game. Yeah, yeah, essentially, yeah, that is exactly that. And 
the imprisoning system is a little bit different in that every mirage or monster has special criteria that you have to fill before you can actually capture them or imprison okay. them. So some of them you just have to reduce their health down to really low. Some of them have to be perhaps the last uh, mirage standing um, in the battle. Some you have to use specific status effects or environment, uh, environmental attacks. So you have to kind of do a little bit of experimentation. You can scan them with Libra, as Ian's doing right now, which will give you um, yeah. basically so, yeah, will tell you how to capture mm. them. So to capture this behemoth, once that will reduce the morality HP to create a prism, to prism unity, which okay. is the chance to yeah. imprison. So we're going to just, so for these guys, we just have to reduce their health to enable to capture them. Some, you'll need to use a specific spell. So we're going to bring their health down using attacks, and uh, hopefully they won't <laughs> get me back in the process. Just Although, speaking practically here, though, if you catch that behemoth, how are you going to fit it on your head? Because it's, it's quite big. Uh, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, you won't be able to because there's a number of sizes. So you, as we mentioned, there's a small, medium, and large size to all the mirages and characters. Um, and only smaller monsters or mirages can be placed on top of the larger. So it has to, be, it has to follow the order of large, medium, small. So in their giant form or normal human form, Lan and Rain are large, at, at same as the behemoth. So you will have to turn them into their chibi form to put them on top of the behemoth. Oh, okay. So or something in between. Like you put a medium sized uh, mirage on the behemoth and then have uh, Lan or Rain on top. So you're adding a whole new level of tactical, com not complexity, but uh, ideas about how to approach battles. And it's going to allow for a lot more creative gameplay and a lot more decisions. And you know, you can bespoke your own attack and you're, oh, I want this monster, that one's cute, that one's got a good oh, attack. And uh, we've captured. Oh, have we? Oh, oh I cursed it. I said, oh. <laughs> Oh, the commentator's cursed here. <laughs> so the way, when you're walking around, you know, we can change our sizes. So the size that you are when you're walking around is the size you will be in battle. So that's how you can figure out what sort of tactics you want to use okay. when you're, uh, you know, planning to go into the next uh, fight. Uh, I'm going to use a potion, and you'll see we actually have a classic menu for the Final Fantasy fans from, mm. you know, who are used to that. This, but you also have uh, a new type of menu oh, for nice. newcomers. So let's use a potion. And you can change between the menus on the fly. You just press L1. And this, this is perfect, of course, for PS Vita as well, because you can actually play this uh, game across the two yes. platforms, PS4 and PS Vita. Yes, it has cross-save functionality, yeah. So you can take your game on the go, whoever Take it are. on the bus. <laughs> that, that's a huge thing, the fact you can sit at home, you know, get a really good battle going, start your adventure. You know, if you're going out for the day, normally you have to wait to get home. You can take it with you on the PS Vita and it's the same game, the same save, and then copy it back across to your PS4. Yep. So exactly. basically, if you need the loo, you just uh, hit pause on your PS4 and <laughs> take your Vita with you. Not that I do that. I was the about the train journey, you know, whatever you want to do. You've got loos on train. <laughs> You've got That's the true. freedom, I suppose. Yeah. You want to play it wherever we're, you want to play it. We're not here to judge. <laughs> so your own personal convenience. Yes. Um, so we touched slightly on the twins earlier. What are they doing in Grimoire? Grimoire, yeah, Grimoire. yeah, the world. Um, we don't want to give away too much of the story, um, but essentially, yeah, they've um, lost their memories and they are trying to recover them uh, by traveling through, through Grimoire. And on the way, uh, they will... Yes! yes. Got it, got yes. it. Yes! <laughs> the behemoth is actually really tough to catch, so um, we've been keeping an eye on... Congratulations. We'll be keeping an eye on people playing... Um, on a Square Enix booth, and like, very, very few people have managed to do that. Um, but as I was saying, yeah, so as Renilan travel through Grimoire, they will also encounter classic Final Fantasy characters, uh, as well as monsters. Obviously, you know, we've seen classic monsters, like the Behemoth, and... Uh, we saw um, the bombs earlier, and uh, yeah, you will meet other characters as well, which uh, can be used in battle um, as summons. They're called champions, but they're effectively summons, which awesome. I believe we have one. Would you like to see one? I would love to see one. Seems like we have Tidus from Final Fantasy X. I only discovered from this morning from Dan that uh, Tidus is pronounced Tidus. For 11 years, I have been calling him Tidus, and I was wrong. So <laughs> 
I, I'm sorry, I just... I don't yeah. feel, I feel like I, I helped enlighten. You have your, your, your yourself a Final Fantasy fan. So Ooh, there's a whole bunch of classic Final Fantasy characters <laughs> who appear as, Here, as champions. And they have their classic moves, but then, you know, the Linux form, so <laughs> it's super cool. <laughs> it's so cute. I'm sure there's so adorable. many Final Fantasy games nerdgasming out right now that they're yeah. this. Can you tell us about any of the other uh, classic Final Fantasy faces we'll see in this game? Yeah, sure. Um, in the trailer that we saw, uh, before we started the segment, actually, we saw a couple. You saw a Snow, saw snow from, from Final Fantasy 13. You know, our number one hero. <laughs> uh, then <Sarah>! <laughs> <laughs> and then I think in the um, in the trailer, we all, well, we've all seen the before the Warrior of Light from Final Fantasy One. Cloud is in there. Um, obviously, from Final Fantasy Seven, you saw Gilgamesh and um, Bart from Final Fantasy Five. So yeah, there's a huge number. You, uh, in the early trailers, we've seen. Oh, we saw Ico from or Ico from Final Fantasy Nine. Uh, I feel like we're testing you here, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to remember now all, all the ones that we've seen. There's, we've seen Quizdus mm -hmm. from, and Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. Is you know, there's Bond loads. from 12 going to pop up? Um, I don't think we've announced. Can you announce it now? So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, I can pass on the message to, to the dev team that Van <laughs> is, uh, yeah. is, is one that Tell you want. Tell them to give me a call. Not, so not Balthier? <laughs> you wouldn't prefer Balthier if you had a choice? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I feel like for me, Varan obviously being being the guy I was playing oh, wow. for yeah. a hundred hours of my life, I would like to see him again. So <laughs> this is our uh, behemoth we've just caught, and uh, we've named it Spamfish. Well, what an interesting, now. what yeah. a handsome, <laughs> you know, rip, rugged beast puts he the team on his back. On the real thing. He's the guy to rely on. You've yeah. also got slightly gingery yeah. beard. Got a nice oh, well, it's <laughs> Auburn, not ginger. It's Auburn. Sorry, Auburn. Auburn, Auburn beard. Flame. So You've this got a flame is where we. Uh, Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we set up our stacks as well. So, because we only have one behemoth, we can only use it in one stack. But uh, we could also change the uh, the ones that appear in here. We don't have any mediums. Oh no, we do. Want to stick a goblin in there? Oh nice. Or a choc Let's have a chocobo tower. Team chocobo. <laughs> Team chocobo. And maybe let's stick a goblin uh, with uh, Lan. There we go. Very so cool. yeah. So even in the chibi and the uh, giant state, you can't mix and match the your mirages. They can mm. only be used once. And we can also actually add abilities to the Mirages. So let's see, Spamfish can use three points. So what we're going to do with him, we can see what sort of things we can do. Um, we're going to add Wildhorn, which is a move we can do in battle. And we're going to add Joyride, which will mean we can <laughs> ride around on his back. So yeah. This is quite unique, yeah. because normally you get to level up your characters rather than, say, your summons. So this is a brand new element. For this game yeah and as you get through it as you keep leveling them up eventually you'll be able to transfigure them into their next form so you know you'll have we've got a baby hammoth and obviously that will evolve into its next iteration and so on so you can uh, you can really start nurturing your team and uh, so let's just don't let us down spam fish oh uh, yeah I, i'm famous for you know being uh, good at things and successful yeah. so yeah i'm sure that you know <laughs> i'll be fine yeah look, look, look at him go. what a noble beast <laughs> So but it looks great as well. The visual style you're going for here, you know, almost it's a mix between photorealism and that kind of arc uh, cartoony style, which is really, really unique. Come on, Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, this is quite Run! A... Run, Spamfish! <laughs> <So, laughs> Run away! So what you can also, I think um, you guys in the chat might have noticed um, when we were unlocking abilities for, uh, for Spamfish, um, <laughs> some, of the, some of the attacks have um, topple strength. So when you're facing off against um, another stack, if you use certain attacks, then you can knock them, basically knock them down. You can break apart their stack, so then they'll become weaker apart, so you can kind of pick them apart. Mm. Again, so another layer to the strategy. And that's the thing, is the layers you seem to be adding. Obviously, you know, people love the Final Fantasy mechanics, they love the world and the characterization, but adding this kind oh. of monster collection, the team building, the attribute, the, you know, the decisions, is adding so much to it, and I'm sure people are going to be able to play this through many times and try different configurations and learn about what they like and what they don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But again, it's like, I guess it's similar to what we um, mentioned with Final Fantasy XV yesterday, that even if, you're, even if you've never played a Final Fantasy game, you can still jump into the world of Final Fantasy and, you know, get to grips with everything very easily and, you know, have a great time. Because even though, like, we've talked about, you know, we kind of nerded out a bit on, like, all classic monsters and uh, characters. This also serves as a great introduction if you've no idea who they are. Mm. So 
you don't need to know, like we mentioned, like Snow from 13, uh, we talked about Van and Balthier from 12, but even if you have no idea who they are, you know, that's okay, because you'll, you'll get to know them throughout the game. And then maybe, you know, if you really like them in this game, then you can go back so to see what game. It's a great entry point to the series, because yeah. a lot of people coming into Final Fantasy is like, do I play 10, do I play 7, do I play 6? Uh, but they can obviously play this one and then get a flavor of all the characters they like, and it serves as a great introduction. We did it! I was a little yeah, heavy-handed okay. with that fight. <laughs> you, Sorry, are, you are actually releasing, uh, what, the, the, is it called Zodiac Age, the uh, Final Fantasy VII remaster? Uh, 12. Oh, sorry. Uh, 12. Yeah, yeah. Of course. We've got 12 coming out and 7 next year as well. Uh, 7 doesn't have a release date. Uh, it's coming. Nice I think yeah, it's nice a release date. You're just holding back. So when's 12 uh, remaster coming out? Uh, that's 2017, next year. Yeah. We've 12. got lots to look forward to then. This looks yeah. ominous. Do we want to enter the Merc Rift and the, attempt the a boss Merc battle? Merc Rift doesn't sound very fun, does it? The Merc <laughs> Rift. <laughs> well, like a happy place of rainbows and colors. Let's try and catch exactly. one I want to go to that. I want to go to the Merc Rift. <laughs> Merc Rift. Hang on. Let me, I'm going to set uh, Rain as tall and Lana small. And then we're going to enter the Merc Rift and see what happens. Big twin, little twin. Yeah. <laughs> Merc Rift box. <laughs> oh, dear. Here we go! Yeah. Oh, we got this. Right. So yeah, eagle-eyed uh, Final Fantasy fans might have a guess of who might this this boss be. I'm, I'm, test, I'm really testing your knowledge now. Uh, if you think if you think about what we've explained about the game already, you I might. Mean, she's a, she's definitely someone we can catch. She's like a. Oh no, I don't know. You have to take away your Final Fantasy card. <laughs> it's, it's not good enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not. Ian, do you think we should actually tell her, or should we just leave the suspense? No, I think we should tell her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this uh, this boss is um, Ifrita, and that that name should. Yeah. I'm lost. No. I'm so oh. sorry. Okay. Do so you know what it is? It's because that chick that's on Ifrita is going, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just absolutely hypnotised. Uh, it's um, uh, a transfiguration form of Ifrit. If we're at the summon that's in uh, multiple uh, Final Fantasy, so seven, there was ten. Uh, was there a ten? All of them. Yeah, all of them. Actually. I think if, yeah, no, yeah. if we has been in all. Okay. I just can't uh, remember now. So I'm going to sure. try and unstack <laughs> them, but I'm going to have to wait till I use Choco Chick because she has a ram ability. I've just realised we've actually left Spamfish out of this fight, so that is not good. Uh. <laughs> You're right. He's lazy. <laughs> good for nothing. Right. How can we win without him? No, oh, he's just he's just chilling. Okay. Oh, you see that? There we go. Because so there was a topple attack. You see the um, the bar that uh, appeared above Ifrita. That she's now a little bit staggered. Uh, that basically go. shows you how yes. stable wow. or unstable um, the the stack is. So yeah, the more you hit it, the more it will wobble, and then eventually you can knock them down, and then they will be stunned, and then you can take out the weakest one by one. Let's use. <laughs> I feel like Foxfire is... Oh, I used that one person. That's good. Oh, no, that was oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So we can now choose which enemy we want to fight because they're on stacks. So mm. let's just... Let's just get, be let's on oh, the little chick. Pick on the little guy. It's nature. It's, it's, it's <laughs> the way nature works. You can't apologize for it. How would you guys feel if someone did that to Twitch? I'd be so sad. Yeah. Wait, wait, it wouldn't. It Anyone wouldn't happen. Anyone who's just tuned in, Twitch is the name of our little chocobo. Yeah, not just Twitch in general. Some <laughs> giant monster attacking someone the whole website. Twitch, you went, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's okay. It's okay because if someone, if someone, you know, squared up to Twitch, we back him up and we be like, mate, mate, step back. Yeah. I think we need uh, some help from uh, Tidus again. That's what yeah. we're Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. So we're going to use some uh, items. It's also worth remembering as well that while we can topple um, our enemies, obviously once they've toppled and recovered, they can stack, as the Frieza has done already, but enemies can also do that to us. I think um, early on in the stream when we find the Behemoth, um, I think Rain was unstacked in the attack. So again, you've got a little extra layer to the strategy, so you've got to keep an eye on the status of your, of your stacks. And if it looks like you're going to get like, toppled, then sometimes it's best to unstack yourself yeah, deliberately so you don't get stunned and then restack. But then obviously you got to think, oh, when am I going to do that? If I do that, am I just going to get absolutely murked? Mm. You know, so it's all about timing. It's not about getting murked. Yeah. It's never about that. But yeah, it, it, you say, it, it adds a whole new level. You know, Final Fantasy, you know, you obviously you've got uh, you know, the famous battle system, but just the fact that you have to make the decisions now on the fly and before you go into the battle and how you approach things, it's going to be all the more involving for players. 
And also, I mean, one of the key things here as well is like, T just, he doesn't stick around. He comes out and he, he does his attack, kicks butt, and then he disappears again. Yep. I yep. got a little bit emotional seeing him spring out the water. I was just yeah. remembering <laughs> the <laughs> end of 10 and just being like, no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Hashtag no spoilers. Yeah. People might not have played no it. No spoilers. I don't forget, as well as we, we talked a lot about the battle today and the walking around, but there's a story, there's a huge story there. You can go talk to loads of different characters. You can go to different areas that are based on mm. other, you know, things we've seen in Final Fantasy. Oh, so you have not just character room, uh, things. You've also got places and elements and yeah. yeah. storyline things that all hint towards the Final Fantasy universe. Yeah, yeah. You will, you will revisit uh, classic Final Fantasy locations. Um, as well as new locations and yeah, meet new characters as well as classic characters. And yeah, the story is very, very key. Just like any Final Fantasy game, yeah, the story is yeah, very, very important to, to this game. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a proper Final Fantasy game without a really involving and emotional storyline. And, and, and in the same way, is there going to be uh, old school themes and you know, memories in the music such a big part of Final Fantasy games? I'm sure there'll be some echoes of Oh, yeah, games. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's... Maybe a little bit difficult for us to hear on the headsets, but when T does his attack, the battle theme changes to um, to the blitz ball theme. So um, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely um, in the trailers as well. In the trailers, you can hear um, remix and remaster themes as well. So yeah, there's new and old stuff in there. So as you mentioned before, for returning Final Fantasy players, they're going to get that you know that sense of oh, I remember this, and new Final Fantasy players are going to get an introduction to the whole world of Final Fantasy. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and, and of course. In the TV stage, for old school Final Fantasy fans as well, you get to see your favorite characters in a whole new light as well. So there's like, you know, thumbs up for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the chibi version of their favorite characters is when we start to see, what does he look like as a cute little guy? And there are so many different creatures mm. in the Final Fantasy universe, you know, that there's, there's endless like, sort of combinations and uh, evolutions that you can do with these creatures. So uh, it's really, it's, it's like a new take on the creatures that people are used to seeing as yeah. well. You know, seeing a little Choco Chick and seeing it evolve into the different versions of Chocobo. Well, we get to ride the, the full-size Chocobo. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> now, was it hard? Obviously, you know, you couldn't include every Final Fantasy character and every uh, enemy. Was, it, was there some was there debate over who to include? Is there some classic ones you've left out? And um, not entirely sure, actually, because obviously we're not part of the yeah, yeah. team, so we can't really speak on behalf I'm of asking that. asking all the yeah, questions. All the really in-depth yeah. kind of questions. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, there's such a variety. I mean, it's in the name, right? World of Final yeah. Fantasy. So um, there, there are lots of characters that, you know, I guess, that are extru you know, super iconic to the series, you know, like Cloud and Sephiroth. Um, but then you've also got, you know, maybe not necessarily lesser known characters, that's the wrong way to put it, mm. but you know, characters that you wouldn't have... Not so iconic. Yeah, that you wouldn't have necessarily thought mm. about. I mean, yeah, you can see...